before you tonight through the authority of your holy name Lord we ask God that you bless this service tonight let us all come together for one mind one accord in you in the faith and believing that you are and that you reward her to those that doubt she seek oh Lord hallelujah ask God that you bless touch heal deliver set free break every yoke lift every burden Lord that your word be a fire set up in the house tonight destroying every stronghold Casting down every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and Lord, we ask the Lord, I plead flowing of the power of the Holy Ghost. Ask Lord that the anointing will go out the door, the wind is go up and down the streets, right? Bring him in, O oh Lord. Hallelujah for Lord Jesus. You said, Lord, you came not for the righteous, but you come and seek a save those are lost. Lord, bring him in. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit of God shake him tonight. Amen. And Lord, we pick anointing up on the service tonight. They become a boy. We ask this service blessed and touched and highly favored. We ask Lord to the authority of thy holy name, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Anybody got a prayer request tonight? Yeah, y'all come on. There's a man. Jesus, look at you and say, 
I prayed and prayed to God to get to let me come to church. And Friday, something come up for three weeks. I get an eight to four thirty schedule, and that was God. That's all that was was God getting me to church because He knew I needed to be fed and I needed to be strengthened. In my robe of white, I will fly away to a land so fair. Meet my Jesus there. It will be so grand when I get to that land. In my robe of white, I will fly away.
you what today was like? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We got a, a good taste of it herself, but when it first came, it's just like when you first get saved. You don't see no issue with nobody. You don't have no problem with nobody. You love everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I said, this. it came in that day as a mighty rushing wind. Filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. Hallelujah. And it was promised. It was a promise. Can you say amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Melissa, it was a promise came. Amen. Prophecy came forth that day. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I said, when prophecy comes forth, everybody ought to want to shout. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Everybody ought to want to shout. Praise God. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Because when you're covered by the blood, glory to God, and you see, glory to God, hallelujah, that the Lord is not slacking in His promises. Glory to God, hallelujah, what He says you do, He'll do. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. You might say, well, I've waited and I've waited. Well, just wait just a little bit longer. Amen. Hallelujah. Just wait just a little bit longer. Amen. But listen, here to come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, uh, I've seen people, uh, mothers pray for their children to be saved, and they left this world and went on. But as time come, uh, glory to God, hallelujah, they came and got saved, hallelujah. Death didn't stop it. Can you say amen? Glory to God, because what the Lord says, uh, honey, it come to pass. Can you say amen? Uh, hallelujah. I might be dead and gone. Uh, glory to God, hallelujah, but the Lord promised me my house. Oh, uh, glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, I might already be gone. Uh, glory to God, but I tell you what, uh, hallelujah. One day they're going to walk in the church one day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're going to say, well, I know mama ain't here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I feel like she's looking down on me. I would pray they would say that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the one thing about it, I believe heaven to rock and roll. Can you say amen? Glory to God. I believe the heavens, hallelujah, will shift. Glory to God. All around. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At the move of God's spirit. Can you say amen? Just as a, a saint. A, a, a stranger, a pilgrim traveling through the land decides to come back home and give their heart to God. Can you say amen? amen? So what are we going to say when the devil says, you ain't going to do nothing, you're going to say, listen to me, devil. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? He said, if I was you, I wouldn't do nothing. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. He says, if I was you, I'd quit singing. If I was you, I'd quit preaching. Uh -uh. I said, oh, but you're not me. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Old flesh tells us a lot of things, Melissa. Glory to God. But honey, that spirit on the insides and inside of us says, rise to your feet. Glory to God. And proclaim. Glory to God. The notable day of the Lord is a coming. By the blood. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody say, I'm glad to be a Christian. Because right. there's something going on in Rotorfield, West Virginia. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again. There's something going on in Rotorfield, West Virginia. Amen. Come on, church. Glory to God. A move of God has taken place for the last while. Glory to God, hallelujah, and I believe, glory to God, hallelujah, for it's all over with. Hallelujah, every pew in this church is going to be filled. Uh, can you say amen? Glory to God, and they're going to be standing on the porch and down the ramp uh, and out in the yard. Glory to God, man, looking in. Glory to God, hallelujah, and deciding, should I go or should I not? Glory to God, but when the beck and call of God comes up on their life, uh, glory to God, they're going to say, they're going to be like when they let the man down. Hallelujah, when they rolled the rooftop back. Glory to God, somebody had to to touch God. Can you say amen? There'll come a day, surely, glory to God, that somebody will need to touch God. Hallelujah. And the little isms and sisms, glory to God, is trying to hold you back. Ain't going to matter no more as long as you get a hold of God. Can you say amen? You got to get a hold of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God is real. He's real. He's nothing. I told a man a while back, he was trying to uh, bargain with God. You don't come up to me and tell me you're making a bargain with God. I said, whoop, whoop, can you say amen? <laughs> whoop, glory, hello, horse, are you? Yeah. Whoop, glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, because he paid, Lord, look at this, honey. Glory to God, he paid for everything at Calvary, and you don't have to bargain with him. Glory to God, he'll freely give to you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And I said, don't you play with God. Can you say amen? I said, don't you make a promise. Oh, my God. Mercy. Don't you make a promise to God, hallelujah, just, hallelujah, that you can have it your way. Honey, it ain't your way, it's God's way. Can you say amen? Glory God, raise your hands and love the Lord. Glory God, it ain't your way, honey, it's God's way. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Glory 
bargain with God. That's right. You're living dangerously. Can you hear me? I'm an old horse at bargain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I tell you, church, I've got a whole lot of interest in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. I've got a lot of benefits on this side, but I'll tell you what. I've got the greatest inheritance on the other side. Amen. I've got an inheritance of eternal life. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many's got an inheritance on the other, on the other side? Amen. And it is for eternal life. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. And I'm proud to be a Christian. Amen. I'm proud to say Brother, that I'm a Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, years ago, I just knocked myself out. I wouldn't dare say that because I felt so, so low and so weak and so out of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But how I got to is say, yes, Lord. And to say, yes, Lord. Yes. Every trial come my way and seem like I'd have to bow a little lower. <laughs> Can you say, man? Amen. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And every time I bow, I'd say, yes, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. And then another one come and I seem like I bowed just a little bit lower. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've got to get all the way down in order to look all the way up. Can you say, man? Yes. Glory to God. And when you look up, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's when you can see Jesus as who he is. Glory to God. Somebody preaches all the time about the cross. I said, if you see the cross, what are you going to see at the cross? Jesus shedding his blood, Calvary seal, for you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. And the best of all, he didn't have to do it, but he did. And to whosoever would call upon him, whosoever, he didn't say did just you, you, and you. He said whosoever. Amen. Hallelujah. When everything goes wrong, what are you going to do? Bow up in the corner and say, well, let them have it. I don't care. I mean, if I know for bad in my life, anyhow, I'll just sit here and take it easy. Now, I have been. I didn't say it tonight. But as time went in life, I had said that back there many years ago. But now, honey, I buckle up and I said, listen to me, devil. Yeah. I, I, whoop, glory to God. Can you hear me? <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Now I don't buck, back up, honey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I press forward. Can you say amen? amen. Now listen to me, devil.
Jesus. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Because we're like a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Can you say amen? Glory to God. And it's really, really good to be here tonight. Really good, hallelujah, to be able to stand up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Raise my hands. Hallelujah. And tell the Lord I love Him in this church tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it ain't going to be long till the Lord's coming. He says, I don't believe it. Not like me if Ripley's believe it or not. I went down there, seen that Ripley's, believe it or not, and that 10-foot man stretched up to that loft. I said, I don't believe it. <laughs> I didn't believe in that, but I believe in Jesus. Oh, y'all want to shout it about that. I don't believe in a lot of Ripley's, believe it or not, but I believe in Jesus. Believe it or not. Can you say amen? Glory to God, because He is the one. Glory to God that spoke the world into existence, Shuri. That message you brought out probably, I don't know how many more you brought out, but to me, as one of the best you could have ever brought out, baby. <laughs> Glory to God, one of the best, honey. I am the I am. One of the best, baby doll, that you could have ever brought out. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, because who, look at this, who's calling you tonight? The I am. I know more who say Who's telling you, hallelujah, to take off the old coat and put on the new? He says, the I am. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the beginning and in the end and all that's in between. Hallelujah, he is the I am. Can you say amen? Glory to God, honey. Glory. And if you were, you knew word from A to Z. Glory to God, hallelujah. You're in there. Can you say amen? And I thank God. I don't know. I might be a W. I might be a T. I might be a S. I don't know what I am. But glory to God, one thing about it. I know who the I am is. Can you say amen? I know who the I am is. Glory to God.
nuts, John. I know it's Melissa's. Glory to God, it's just so easy to work with. Glory to God, and that's just like the Lord. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And I could just see, hallelujah, big old, hallelujah, clay he formed. Hallelujah, most beautiful, no doubt. Glory to God, and maybe not, I don't know. Glory to God, hallelujah. But one thing about it, it was just a little clay laying on the ground. Glory to God, hallelujah. But all of a sudden, glory to God, hallelujah, when he was blown the breath of life into him, eyeballs woke up. Can you say man? Organs woke up. Can you say man? Flesh wasn't done no more. Can you say man? Glory to God, he became a mortal man. Can you say amen? Wow, glory, wow, glory. My God, he became a man. Not just clay, a land on the ground, does he? Glory to God, he was a living man, a living soul. Right there before God in the garden church. Glory to God, we were born to serve the Lord. Can you say amen? Woo, glory. My God, we were born to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And I could just see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the breath went in, he began to something started moving. Wasn't falling apart. You know, you put the dust. We used to make these old sand things. Go on. Keep down the sand castle. But this was flesh. In the image of God. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You didn't have to go and scatter that sand no more. Hallelujah, because it was a living soul. Amen. It was a living soul. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. I behave myself, but I'm telling you, I feel so good. Obey the Lord. Oh, God. Obey the Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah to you, Oh, son. I feel so good. Honey, I feel so good. Glory to God, hallelujah. I believe sometimes, hallelujah, I get in the morning and I feel like I'm just getting ready to step over, hallelujah, out of this life, over into a new life. Can you say, man, glory to God, I don't know if I really am, glory to God, but I feel like it, darling. Sometimes, hallelujah, it's like a pow, glory to God, and I'm gone, glory to God, but I tell you what, glory to God, I'm so proud, glory to God, that the Lord church because I go to church to be blessed and to, and to and bless somebody else brother Amen. Pray I go to help I don't go to hurt Amen. anybody come up to me and say Sandy you're hurt to my church I said well I love you with all my heart <coughs> and I pray for you but it ain't stopping me I'm still going on can you say amen? Can you hear me? There's always somebody out there on the wayside of crime. Somebody out there needing somebody to tell them a good word. To tell them prepare, get prepared. Because time is running out. Hallelujah. I would never want to say anything to hinder anybody's ministry or hinder anybody in the Lord in no shape, form, or fashion, sissy. Glory to God. How if anything? Hallelujah. I pray, glory to God, that you say, where you're going, I want to go. 
What you've got, I want. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What you've got, I want. Can you say man? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If God can do that for you, I know what he can do for me. Can you say man? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because he has done a whole lot for me, Charles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he's been so good to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've got to tell it. I have to tell it. Glory to God. Because I told the Lord, I said, you bring me out. And I'll serve you till I die. Yes. And I began to seek for that door. And I found that door right out of nowhere. He was right there all the time. <laughs> well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he said he never leave me, never forsake me. Amen. But like I said, the spider, he makes a web out of me. But if I let him catch me in his web, and I'll be food for the next when comes along that foolishly gets in his web. He'll start webbing that down. Yeah. I ain't wanting to be food for no spider. I'm going to be watching for one over to the house. I'm going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill it. And then we'll walk out there one morning. He's going to call him a butterfly or a gnat or something. Or a rolling around in animal. I'm going to knock that thing from the yonder. <laughs> Can you say amen? amen. I said, I'll learn you. To try to tear down what God's building. Can you hear me? Amen. We're powerful in God. There was a liar. Can you say amen? amen? We're powerful in God. The devil's a liar. Actually, if you really knew what kind of power you got on your insides, you never have a gloomy day. You never have a gloomy day. Actually, I felt him sometimes art me like this. God art me. Hallelujah. And I felt like I was one of them. You know what a a transistor or one of them things that arcs everything up. Will you better not mess with me. <laughs> Can you say amen? <laughs> you better not mess with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell Jesus to get you. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. You start messing with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell Jesus to get you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I'm one of God's children. One of God's sheep. Amen. And I'm proud to be here, Melissa. Amen. Proud to be here. We had an awesome service down at Gethsemane yes, we did. Saturday night and I'm telling you the truth if little Joy Prophet did come all the way from the back all the way to the front <laughs> a preaching and a jumping up and down and having himself such a good time how you blessed about everybody in there can you say man? amen Amen, hallelujah. He just blessed everybody. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He just stayed right in the back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But when I called him out, honey, he ain't never been backwards. And that's how we have to be. But it's, uh, we can't be backwards. we got to step out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Joy's got the boldness, honey, to step out. Everybody said, well, I, 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 I. He said, well, I'm proud to be here tonight. Glory to God. And I'm proud of Jesus. And he come right on out of there, honey. And went all the way up here and all the way back. Up here and all the way back. Glory to God. And you've got to have a backbone like that. Glory to God to serve the Lord. Glory to God. And I just admire him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How the Lord uses him. He's come through a lot of things, but the Lord has blessed him. The Lord has really blessed him. And I said on some people on the phone, I said, he's been blessed. Can you say, man, he don't back up no more. Glory to God. He's got to go. He keeps a pressing on. Glory to God. And that's the way we ought to be. Maybe we should just keep pressing on and telling the world, just look what the Lord is done. Glory to God. I didn't do that. Honey, that took God. Can you say it, man? Glory to God. When you're ridiculed and put down, Glory to God, and all of a sudden the Lord picks you up. Glory to God, He holds you for a while. And when He sets you out on His wing, Glory to God, and He turns you loose, you can fly. Can you say it, man? Glory to God. Hallelujah. When He picks you up and holds you like this, out on His wing, Glory to God, and He turns you loose, you can fly. Can you say, man? Give the Lord a big hand tonight. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. What do you think about Jesus? Don't y'all look at me like I ain't finished. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I'm proud to be here. Amen. I really am. And I want to share with you that God is the same everywhere. I have church here. Everywhere I go, I do the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes I kind of hold back just a little bit. But once I get turned loose and get my mind off of everybody and everything, I can get her done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is this and mind being used also in Christ, and we got to get her done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for me, and I pray for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Y'all gotta cut that off, Sandy. I'll just grab that. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a good word from Sister Sandy? I'll tell you what, I love to hear her anything she does. Some people you just love to hear about anything they do because it's always anointed and that's what we need. We gotta have that anointing. It breaks the yoke. It releases the bondage. We got a lot of people in bondage and they need release. I might try to do one song. Uh, Key of A. I know I've been sealed. I know I've been sealed, sealed, sealed. Today God's redemption. Still Jesus, still love. You feel your 
that again and I just love and I appreciate Sandy and Shannon so much they're so dear to me our spirits you know your spirits can bear witness with each other and when they bear witness that means that God wants you to do something with each other it doesn't matter what man wants it doesn't matter how it looks but it matters what God wants because we all want to please God right well if you got your Bibles tonight it's already getting a little late I'll try to rush through this but let's go to I want you to go to John for me. St. John in the New Testament. And go to the fourth chapter. And then when you're getting that, go over into Luke. And get Luke. And we're going to go over in there maybe as the Lord sees fit. Hallelujah. 
I was at home today and I said I was ready for church. I go to church most of the time, but it seems like the past couple nights when I come in from church, the devil was waiting on me. Have you ever done that, Sister Sherry? You go and you have such a good service and you come home and it seems like the devil's trying to throw everything at you, but the brick you got your foot on. And if you get that, he'd throw it at you, Brother Johnny. But you know what? I tell my children, and they all need God in their life, but I tell them, you know what? I'm going to pray. Mommy's got work to do. Mommy needs to get down to business with God. Mommy can't fix nothing, Sherry. I can't fix nothing, Brother Charles, but I go to the one that's got the answers. I go to the one that's got the fix it, and I give it to him, and I say, here it is, Lord. You take it. You said you were my brother. You said you would put no more upon me than I could bear. Here's a load, and I'm laying it at your feet. And then you leave it there, and you go on. The devil don't like that, Sister Shannon. He don't like it when somebody learns to depend upon God. Because that gives him less room to work. And as long as he's got room to work, then he's enjoying like a devourer does, running around, trying to tear apart what God tries to put together. And I'm very mad tonight at the devil and every force of hell. And I said, I'll give him a black eye every chance I get. I'm in this thing for the long run this time, Brother Johnny. It ain't no little here and a little there. Hit you hit me with your best shot. And I'll hit you with the word of God every chance I get. All right, all right. Hallelujah. The book of John, the fourth chapter. We'll start at verse 1. Hallelujah. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into, again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which was called Shekar, near to the porcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samarians. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our fathers Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will come amongst thy people. Open their ears to hear what thus had the Lord to say. Open their eyes to see and their hearts to receive. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will take me, Melissa, out of the way and let the Holy Spirit come into this vessel. Use it for thy glory, Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, as you read this, this woman that was in Samaria was a woman that never fooled with the Jew because the Jews had no dealings with them. They had a controversy going on. In the beginning, when Abraham had a lot of sons, they all got scattered throughout. They believed 
believed in Moses. They believed he was a prophet. And they believed in the book of the Tauran. And they believed in the laws that Moses took. But that's what they were stuck in. They were stuck in those days. Jews, they believed differently. They believed in the prophets that come after. They believed in everything that went forth, even after Moses. But they were stuck into a set routine of religion. And so when Jesus approached this woman, he surprised her. She was no doubt a weary woman. The Bible says, if you don't want to read, that she was saying, had five husbands, she told Jesus. And he said, no, you don't even have a husband now. The one you have isn't even your husband. But she was a woman. And if you go in and you research it out, she was a woman that when in those days by the law of the Samaritans that they believed, the woman wasn't like it is now. You can get a written a divorcement. A woman can divorce a man anytime she wants. If you think in the here and now when you read that, you can look at it like that. But if you want to know what the truth of it meant, the man had the right in the book of Levites, or it was Deuteronomy 1, that the man could get put away that woman. If he saw fit to, by the whole law, if he didn't like you, if he didn't like the way you cooked, if he didn't like the way you took care of the house, he could put you away and go and get him another woman. But the woman couldn't do the same. And therefore, the Word of God says she come down through her, Sandy. Come on now. And she come down through her at the sixth hour of the day. And it was about 12 noon. She come walking down that dusty road. Come walking down through her. Looking around. Saying, has anybody seen me coming, you think? I hope nobody's out today. She was a woman of great shame. The reproach that was brought upon her from all of her husbands. The life she was living. She come down to get water when nobody else was around. So many times in the world we live in right now, people come and they do things when nobody else is around. They say, oh, I would love to go to church, but you know what I've done. And you know what they say. Who cares what they say? Who cares what you've done? The walk of shame was not paid for one. The walk of shame has been paid for many in the day and hour we live in. Amen. And this woman had shame upon her. No doubt she looked afar, Sandy, and she saw him. She saw Jacob's well. And she saw the man sitting on it. And she thought, who is that? Who is... Oh God, somebody's here. Instead of turning around and walking away, for some reason she kept approaching and she came up to him and he spoke to her and he said, give me something to drink. She said, you're asking me? This shameful woman that a reproach has been brought on, that even people that is in my religion, even people in this country of my belief doesn't want to hang around me, but this Jew is asking me for water? Who is this? And curiosity can just set in a little bit. How many times did Jesus get your attention with a little bit of curiosity? He don't come in acting like he's something. He comes in right into that part of your life where you're not sure what's really going on. But he says, why don't you go a little further and see what's waiting on the other side? Sometimes when your world's falling apart and you're a saint of God and you don't know which way you're going to turn and the enemy comes in as a flood. Jesus always is standing there saying, but what if? And that little bit of curiosity can make you press on a little bit more. But what if you come through this and what I have waiting on the other side? What if you just fight the devil one more time? Don't give up. What if you stand your ground? That curiosity gets a human mind and it makes them start thinking, okay, maybe I can do this one more time. He gives you a little strength from those living waters that he's speaking about that goes down on in the side of you. 
Come on now. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. And as she approached him, and he asked her for water, he started talking to her. He started speaking to her, and he told her, saying, he said, I've got some water, and if you drink what I got, you ain't never going to thirst again. And that curiosity kicked in a little more, Brother Johnny, and she said, what? Water that you could never be thirsty again in the desert place that we live in? Yeah, this man really has got her curiosity. This man has really got her thinking, what is this? And who is this? And I believe I'm liking how it sounds to me. If you look over in the book of Luke in the 13th chapter and the 19th chapter, in the 13th chapter, you'll come to where there was a woman with an issue of blood. For 18 years that woman was bound. And that woman was bound down with that issue of blood. And she didn't know what she was going to do. The Bible said she spent all she had on doctors at one point. And she was bound down. And as Jesus went walking by, she was standing there at the side. And she was standing and he said, Woman, thou art loosed. Those simple words is what the church needs in the day and time we're living in. Depression has got them. Anxiety's got them. This woman had a spirit of infirmity. It had her bound over that she couldn't stand up straight. For 18 years she suffered in this condition, Sister Sandy. She didn't know what she was going to do. She didn't know if she could make it to walk even to where he was. But she decided that she was going to listen to them. And she heard about this man called Jesus. And she went into where he was, no doubt. And when she got to him, he loosed her that infirmity. So many people in the church world today is not only sitting with infirmities and sickness, they're sitting with infirmities of mental diseases. They've got the, the devil's got them exactly where he wants them. They're bound down in their mind. They're bound down with addiction. They're bound down. This woman was no doubt a Christian. He did not look at her and say, go and sin no more, did he? He come and he healed her. And that's what the church world has to do. They have to believe on the man that comes to save, heal, deliver, and set free. They have to know, like the woman at the well did, that the one that she's talking to, the one that's trying to get your attention, is the very one that's got all the answers. You may be looking up stuff. You may be looking at dictionaries. You may be looking up stuff on Google. You may be asking old timers about this and that. You may be roaming around like the woman with the infirmity from doctor to doctor. Some people wonder from saint to saint, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through this? When you should be looking to Jesus Christ that has the answer. He has the answer to every problem in every situation. He's speaking to his church. He's speaking to his people. And he's saying... What if? What if? What? And they're ignoring him in the day and hour we're living in. They're ignoring what the Son of God has to say. And some of them can't even hear the sinner man. They wander around like the woman at the well did. Lost in shame, sorrow, and disbelief. They don't know why they're in the situation they're in. No doubt whenever she got married, she married for good. She didn't know that she was going to be looking at five husbands down the road and the one she was staying with wasn't even her husband. Why wasn't he her husband? She had to make it. Back then, women couldn't make it. The Jewish people and the Samaria people couldn't make it unless someone was there. As it was in the days of old, so shall it be. Today, we can't make it unless we got God on our side. Unless we get married to the King of King and Lord of Lords. We can't make it in the hour we're living in. There's too many problems and too many situations that keep us bound down. And when you're bound down, it's hard to look up to the one that sits on the right hand 
the throne of God. Come on. Praise the Lord. In Luke 19, you'll see a little situation about a little man. It's the Bible statue. No doubt Zacharias was his name. Zacharias was a man. And he heard about Jesus. That's what I want to be. I want to be sort of like Zacharias. I don't want to be my sins now. Don't get me wrong. But I want to hear about what's going on down the road. And I want to go see. I want that curiosity to kick in so bad that my feet start making action toward the Son of God that's coming to town. That's come to cleanse the world and see salvation and relief to His people. did. He was little in statue. He heard Jesus was passing by. The crowd was pressing and they was mighty. And he couldn't see him. He couldn't see him and he couldn't get to him. So many times when we're bottled down in our trials and we're bottled down in our troubles and when we're tried by God and put through the fire sometimes it's hard for you to see him. Sometimes it's like he's a hundred miles away. You go into prayer and it feels like you're praying against the wall and you gotta stay a little longer. And then you gotta stay a little longer. But don't give up. Keep seeking. Keep praying. Keep believing. Cause he's there. He's there waiting on you. There might be forces unseen stopping automatically but it's on its way he said my ears are open to your cries his ears aren't away from us they're open to the cries of his people the enemy wants you to believe that no matter what you do it's never going to be good enough in God's eyes no matter how much you pray no matter how much you try to fast no matter how much you do fast, no matter how much you read the Word of God, it ain't no, no good. It ain't doing no good. You're still the same as you was two years ago, doing the same thing, and you're still having problems. There's something wrong with you. That's what the enemy would like for God's people to believe, Sister Sandy. Come on, praise the Lord. They, he keeps them bound down in their own mind. And they got their mind on trying their best to stay afloat that they can't swim. They're having a hard time getting to shore where Jesus is because they're still in the boat out in the storm on the water. It's time in the day and time that we live in to have some Peter faith. It's time to step on out of that boat Get some gravity under your feet. Believe that He is the God that will take care of thee. Believe that He is the one that awards those that diligently seek Him. Believe that He will do what He said and step out on that water and start walking on it. Why should you swim when you got the power to walk on it? Amen. This woman in Samaria she knew there was something different. There was something different about God. Something different about just His presence. The glory of the Lord is what I call it, Brother Johnny. The glory of the Lord is something you step into sometimes occasionally. The Spirit of the Lord is there. Most every night if you go in church and you put your heart in it, you'll get something out. Holy Ghost comes with you. He lives in you. He abides in you. The living waters that the, Jesus was telling her about was the promise yet to come. That living waters that stir up abundantly within you. When Jesus went and got glorified, that's when He sent those living waters back. That's when He come inside and He abode. And when He abode in you, that's when the Holy Ghost come down. And that's when those living waters start stirring. And they start working. And the Spirit of God is liberty and freedom to those that reside in it. Amen. Lord have mercy. 
But the glory of God is a different thing. It's a special thing. The glory of God abounds like with the children of Israel. As the cloud was by day and the fire by night, God was with them. He was a God that wasn't far off. He was with them. He come down with them. And He abide with them with His glory. And they were protected. And they were shielded. I believe we need a day and time in the age we're living in to get the glory of God daily. To walk in His presence and in the glory of God daily. And to be able to stand up and declare what thus said the Lord. If it's on a street corner or if it's in a supermarket. If it's in a church or if it's outside at a park. If it's when you're coming down the road and you picked up a hitchhiker. Or if it's when the drug addict shows up looking for a dollar. Say something about God. There's stuff in this world that's more precious than gold. Amen. Peter told the man laying at the gate, Silver and gold have I none. Such as I have, I give unto thee. What he gave that man was more than money could buy. When that man rose up from a crippled position and started walking around on the legs that had never stood, that was worth more than money, Sister Josie. There's some things in this life that's worth more than materialistic subjects. They come and go. Cars come and go. Houses come and go. Children grow up. Grandbabies grow up. Mother and dads die. Brother and sisters leave. But there's one that's more precious than anything in this world. And anything money can buy. And that's Jesus Christ of Nazareth that went to the cross and died for the sins of the people. That is something that we can't afford. The price was paid. He paid it a long time ago, Sister Sherry, when he went to Calvary. He stretched out his arms and he died for an wretched like me. He died so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly means we don't got to walk around as children of God struggling every minute saying, oh God, how am I going to make it from next minute to next minute? My bills are due and my family's falling apart? No. We got a God that says, put your hand in mine. David said, I lift my eyes unto the hills from which my help cometh. My help cometh from the Lord. The God of all creation that holds us in the palm of his hand. Is there any so mighty as he? Is there anyone that can stand in his presence and live to this day? God takes care of his own. And that's why the devil fights us. That's why the devil comes at us. And he tries in every area. And he continues to work because he knows he's got a short work, Sister Sandy. Shannon, he knows his time's winding up. He knows that word just as good as you and I do. And he knows that he's lost a battle that he can't win. But he's determined to take as many people with him as he possibly can. Why? Because he hates creation. He hates the one that God created to have a relationship with. He hates you and I. He goes deeper than wanting to take you to hell with him, Charles. He goes a lot deeper than that, Sister Sherry. It's all because God created man. He created him in his image. He created him to walk with him. He created him to have a relationship. He created him to take care of everything that he made here on this earth because it was good. And he created man and loved him so much. He was keeping him. And he said, I'm going to create a helpmate. Adam needs a helpmate. And created a woman to live with Adam and to abide with him. And share the presence of 
God and have a relationship and take care of everything that God gave them. And the enemy saw one thing. Imagine that. One thing. You know, we think, oh, I just don't know if I'm going to make it. And the enemy comes at us because we struggle and sometimes we stumble. Sometimes things happen. And he comes at us. But we get back up. But he still tries to bring that condemnation on God's people. To keep them bound down. Condemnation is the biggest binder of all when it's in the body of Christ. Because if you're feeling condemned, you're not feeling worthy. And if you're not feeling worthy, you can't receive what God wants you to receive. And that's what the enemy tries to do. He brings in that condemnation. And in the Garden of Eden, one thing they were told not to do. Not a hundred thousand. One thing. And the enemy got him to do it. Why? He was persistent in the plan that he wanted to take away God's great possession, which was man. And because of that, he hates the creation of man. And he doesn't want God to have a relationship with them here or the eternal kingdom to come. He doesn't want us to be able to abide with Him. You say, how do you know? What do you mean relationship? God come down walking, the Bible said, in the cool of the day. And He said, where are thou, Adam? He come down and had a relationship with Adam. He come down walking. And the way it was spoken, He did it all the time. It was nothing for God to come down and to talk with and abide with and communicate with the creation that He loves so much. And because of that, the enemy found out a way to destroy it. But the enemy ain't God. And God made a way of escape. And God always makes a way of escape for His people. When you're burdened down, and you're thinking like the woman at the well that come walking. Is anybody looking? I can't believe that I'm in this position. I once was an upstanding person. I've let this happen in my life and I've let that. And now I'm walking trying to get me some water. Just make it to the water and back. So many times in life, people in the world we live in think, if I can just do this. If I can just take that next pill, it'll get my mind off of it. If I can shoot up one more time, I'll quit now. If I can have one more drink, I'll quit. But then, when unexpectedly, Jesus is sitting at the well. He's waiting. Troubles has hit. You're in a situation you don't know how to get out of. You're bound down like the woman and you're bent over and you can't even raise your head to look up to God. But He knows you. He sees you. And He knows every circumstance that created the best you're in or the condition you're in. And whether you're not saved and know Him or whether you are and you're just troubled and bound down, He's there with His hands stretched out. He said, I am the door to the sheepfold. The only way you can come into God is through by me. That sheepfold door is open and it's waiting. And He's standing on the other side without stretched arms. Say to all ye that are heavy and burden laden, come unto me and receive rest. Take my yoke upon me. Learn of my ways. God is an awesome God. He's a God that never leaves you nor forsakes you. No matter if it's your worst day on this earth or if it's your best day, He is there to pick you up and He's there to celebrate when you succeed. He's there at all times. He is the high priest, the interceder for you and I. He is the one that go went to heaven and made a way that we can go there also. The little woman at the well, she received him in her heart that day. And he told her that he would create 
living waters. She went and she ran into the city. When you get in contact with God, that's how you know. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can sit and tell me all day long, Brother Donnie. Well, I turn my life around. I'm a new person. You know, I receive God. Yeah? But then they just don't want to mention it much, you know? They just, it seems like that opportunity and that subject just don't want to get mentioned much. <laughs> but... When you come in contact with the Son of God and you are drawn by the Holy Spirit and the Lord Himself comes in contact with you, you are like the woman at the well. You run to tell about a man that I saw. He told me everything I had done. And come and see him. Come and meet this man that told me of all of my sins. Come and see him. That's how we need to be today. Come and see what the Lord is doing. Come and see what the Lord has done in my home. What He's done for me. Paul told King Agrippa, He said this thing was done in a corner. Why didn't Jesus do it in a corner? It's for all the world to see. Amen. He came to save the world. He came to save those which was lost. As Sister Shannon gets a song, little Zacharias pressed through that crowd and he couldn't get to Jesus. And when he pressed through, he decided, I'm going to get his attention. I've done too much, waited too long, I've heard too much. That's how they are about you, probably, Sister Sherry. Sister Sherry, she's got all this going on. She's telling me all these great time, things all the time. She's doing so good. I want to go see what it is she's coming in contact with. That's what this little man heard. He heard about Jesus. And he climbed up in a tree. And when he climbed up in the tree... Jesus saw him. And do you think by half just happened that Jesus happened to look up? No. He was God. He knew Zachary's heart in that crowd. He knew what he wanted. And he knew that he wanted a change in his life. He knew that he wanted a circumstance change. And he knew that if he come in contact with that man Jesus, he heard he'd never be the same. Jesus looked up and he saw him. And he said, come down. I'm abide with you. Jesus is saying to people, come down. I'm going to abide with you today. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will get up, I'll come in. I'll sit with you and he with me. That is the hard thing, isn't it? All saints of God's held out and all eyes closed. If you don't know God in here tonight, I ask Come and hear and sing. Taste it. See if you can do it. See if you don't think this life. Jesus abides in you more than you like the life you're living in now. He takes a mess and he creates a blessing. He takes a situation and he turns it around and across it. He is the Son of God.
Father, I praise you, Lord, for the anointing. I praise you for what you get ready to do. I praise you, Lord, for the victory, hallelujah, that she has in you. Hallelujah, I feel my Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, I feel my tight. Lord, you when you feel like God, we're to buy ourselves. Lord, you're there. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. You feel like Lord, when I battle my God, I'll trouble break blue. Lord, you're there. Hallelujah, Lord, you said you'll never leave us, Lord, for Satan. Hallelujah. And Lord, right now, right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus. Some see full built down here. Some for faith. I was for Jesus with him my way. I'm just a viewer here. Soon I'll be gone. The thing that over here, I'm headed home. I said nothing.
Yeah. When a man laid wait 38 years. Yeah. Hallelujah, Peter and John come by and said, Silver Lord, have I number such as I have? Yeah. Yeah. Here by thee. Yeah. Hallelujah. I told Shuri to pray for my legs. Uh, and I told John I need prayer for my legs. Uh, I'd like to never got in here tonight. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Begin to shout. And the Lord said, go out there and go down that ramp and come back up. Glory to God. I went down that ramp and I come back up and like nothing was the matter. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what do you think about Jesus? I had to go, Johnny. Glory to God. I had to go down out here in a, all in my face. Glory to God. I've been having to pull myself in the bed like an old hallelujah hit my car. I ain't heard me. First I started doing this and I was going to get Shirley to look at me. She was shouting. I went, 
Man, alive, ain't no pain no more. <laughs> Can you say, man, ain't no pain no more. Hallelujah. It might not mean much to y'all, but it means a whole lot to me. It means a whole lot to me. <laughs> Josie, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you got this high court, high tech on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No, no drawback. Can you say, man? Glory to God. When you got this high tech on, honey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's all go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. Glory to God. Train on that. Ain't no need drawback. Back. Lord God, hallelujah. And your body begins to get all ranch and toward like Abraham's daughter. Lord God, getting bowed down. Lord God, but Jesus one day comes by. Lord God, and he said, Loose. I know what I say. He said, Loose. Lord God, and when you're loose, you're loose. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Man, I feel good.
Come here, have a seat. Praise the Lord. I'm like Sandy. Nobody else wanted I wanted tonight. I think. Hallelujah. Lord, what anointing in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The yoke was broken tonight, wasn't it? Yeah. It was God Amen. Amen. Anybody got a testimony tonight before we get ready to leave here? Anybody? Enjoyed it all. It was all wonderful, and I thank God for it. I thank the Lord for everybody who's here tonight, and let's pray for the ones that must be here. Amen. Thank you for His many blessings, for everything He's done for us. Lord, I thank you for the Word. Thank you for everything that came for. Lord, hallelujah. You know, brother Tony, I'd like to say that I thank God for this little church, and I thank God for the people that come here that I get to fellowship with. You know, it's about working together, and in a certain people come together and we can all work together and there's no big eyes in it and everybody gets to use their gifts and everybody works together then God can really move and that's why I love services like this because God uses those that he can use and when he can work and no man hinders he can do mighty things and I thank God for that tonight I thank God for this service I myself got fed and I got blessed tremendously Amen I don't know why he is Helen and Karen? Yeah. I was glad to be here tonight. Glad for the word. And Satan's not taking what belongs to it. it it's mine and I'm going to fight for it. Amen. Amen. Hello. Um, serving God is just a true wonderful thing. And, it, and it, Satan's got to go. He's got to go. One way or another, he's got to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give my hand clap yeah. Honey, what about you tonight? I'm so happy to be here tonight. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm just glad Karen comes with me. Yes. Amen. Thank I thank God for Karen. This man, Arnie. Thank God for Holly tonight. tonight. Yes. Amen. Don't you got anything you want to say before you? Anything else? Joseph. Yes. You got anything you want to say? Yes, I don't know. Okay. What about Melissa tonight? You tell me what to do. I'm glad to be here. The Lord is good and He will provide. If you ask and you keep asking, He will make sure that there's a way. Amen. You don't see a way, but He makes a way. Amen. Things will work that you never thought would work. Things will come up and that you never thought of. But he's working all the time. Just lay it at his feet. Just let go. And, and that's the hardest that's the key, thing. Right there. That was the hardest thing for me. But I'm learning. If I leave it there, and don't pick it back up. Because if I pick it back up, he can't do anything. If I leave it there, he'll work on it. That's right. Just forget it. Pray, and it'll happen. Amen. Amen. Karen? Good to be here. Thank God for everything He's done for us. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful God. He's done a good job singing tonight. Thank Sherry? Amen. Thank you. What about Sherry I tonight? I do have to say that you put me on the spot. <laughs> That's like God said, really? You're going to sit there flat out tell me no? So I don't have to get up and sing. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Put people on the spot. It's usually what I do sometimes. <laughs> what about Sherry tonight? Brother Johnny, I just want to thank God for being here. I have been in a place to where I just thought it was all over. I've been in a place to where I can hear the devil more than I can hear from God. Who is that? And I preached the message the other night that enough is enough. Get behind me saying, and that's what I meant. You know, I thought that I was over and I kept saying to God, I said, God, if you would use me again to show me that you're not done with me. And that's what he done tonight. He used me again to show me that he's not through. Amen. And I thank God for it because I was at a place to where I thought it was all over. I was at a place to where I was going to end it all. And I just thank God that I did. 
I really think I what I did. Oh, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. Thank you, Lord. Hell. Lori. I just want to thank and praise the Lord that I'm here. Amen. Lord Kenny. I thank the Lord for being here. Thank you for filling the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blessing I got tonight. If you didn't get blessed, something wrong. Hey, Amen. Huh? <laughs> what did I bury tonight? One word. Wow. <laughs> Good I'm word. Not agree. Wow. Good word. Good word. <laughs> wow. Come up here a minute. I look at this one right here. He cut loose up for a church church. Now I'm praying for her to get cut loose here. Hey man, she's getting it down inside of her, and she's getting it all fired up. And when she does get cut loose, it's going to just a lot of people going, "Ooh, wow!" <laughs> yeah. Hey man, the Lord is going to be a fireball. Right. Shannon, you got yeah. anything you want to say Brother tonight? Good yeah, to have you. Brother John. Yes, ma'am. Put her on the spot. <laughs> 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 yeah. you know, you know. Uh -huh. What about Sandy tonight? Yeah, I, I thank the Lord for my blessing tonight. I thank Him for the word inside of me. And everything. And I, I, I can go on all night and never tell enough. You know, but when Sherry spoke over that there's somebody in here. We're not just a one-membered body. We are many members. And when one member has got something going on, I believe that the Lord tells the other member. I do too. Yeah, I, I, I believe Amen. that you will feel that. You might not, a lot of people might not believe that, Melissa, but I, I believe that. Amen. If somebody's got a problem and they're in the body, and they're a member in the body, I believe somebody's going to feel that. And I believe tonight that the Lord has really moved for some people in here. Well, He moved for me. You know, so I don't know moved for me. He had to move for somebody else. <laughs> so it was such a wow service. <laughs> you know, I, I just love it. And, and I, I thank God for everything He's done for me. I could go on on that reminisce and that memory lane and everything. And, and you know, and I, I, I agree. I agree with Johnny on, on the jury there. I believe that that uh, little summer box that just turns up just to see how we handle situations and, you know, just love it, love it, praise God for it, overcome it, keep it going on. Amen. You know, I mean, uh, Lord, I've been in serving the church, served the Lord for so many years. And I've come up on obstacles that looked impossible to me. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. And he said, make your enemies be at peace with you, but and I will try my best to present myself. No matter what was said to me, I still just walk in and walk on and say, yeah, Amen. I want to come to praise the Lord. But you know, I, I do thank God for the service tonight. I can never tell enough, Josie, about how I feel tonight. Uh, I, I, I like to use a Webster. Webster can't define what happened here tonight. Amen. 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 You know what the Bible says then I think first or second Corinthians at twelve forty six I believe it is. When you come into the church everybody should have a song, songs, uh tongue, speaking in tongues, interpretation. Yeah, the gifts, working together. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Amen. It was coming from the back, it was coming from the front, it was coming from the side. The devil didn't have no place. He was in the crossfire. Amen. We burn him out tonight. He said, I better get out of here while it gets good. He left out. Hey, I don't know if they have a place where I can get somebody. <laughs> what did you say, Kurt? I said, it's even coming up and down now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think people going through the crack around the windows or anything, he couldn't get out of here tonight. Hey, Amen. That's I, good. That's good. Hey, Amen. I, I like it. I love it. Hey, Amen. I love it. Hey, Amen. I thank God for anointed service tonight. I thank God for everyone that came. I thank for obedience. Oh, yeah. That's the number one key. Not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. No, I'm not. Amen. And I like that. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I love the anointing. Amen. I love to feel the presence of God. And that's what I feel tonight. Amen. I heard something that I need to hear tonight. I thank God for being obedient. Amen. And I know He's a moving for every heart, soul, mind, and body in here. Miracles, signs, wonders. And the Lord said, you have not seen. I said, no, praying. And He said, you have not seen what I've been ready to do upon the face of this earth. Amen. He said, my anointing, my miracles, my fire, and my power is going to be spread into my people. 
The devil has bound them long enough. He said, I'm going to rise up a standard against him. And he said, I'm going to pour out my anointing upon them. And he said, I have not seen ear turn nor enter to the hearts of man what I'm getting ready to do. Amen. Amen. I believe people's going to be in a place that healing, the miracles, and signs and wonders is going to happen every night. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I thank God for the anointing. I thank for everything you've done for me. Yes. Everybody will tonight. I'd like for you to stand. We've got some prayer boxes up here. I'd like for everybody will come help me pray. We've got a little four-year-old little lady right here that's battling cancer. Amen. And she has fought all kinds of treatments. She's fought all kinds of stuff. Yes. Amen. And that and over there, it, she was born having a lot of organ trouble. But we're going to believe in miracles tonight. We've got three prayer boxes here. A box with people with cancer in it. So if you believe in signs and miracles and wonders, help me pray tonight. Let's believe in miracles. Hey, Sister, I know her name here, but it's not Lord knows that. Lord, if you come up for you tonight. Lord Jesus, you see every battle in the situation, everywhere you give a disease, send her back on her own. I want to give her to her daily. Lord, you don't want to give her to her daily. Lord, you don't want to give her to her daily. Touch his child tonight, Lord. Lose your way from cancer. Not only her, but Lord, the young girl, the old. Hallelujah, Lord, the found that in me. Hallelujah. But Lord, I think I know you to take over tonight. And I'm going to sit on my floor with you, Jesus. I'm going to three bar boxes here. Three people in the small. Sick, reflected. Hallelujah. But Lord, you make a way when there's no way. You said, by your strength, you're healed. And by your anointing, hallelujah, we're overcomers. And Lord, right now, hallelujah, you're so precious blood. My Lord, forgive us to shed it. And Lord, I think I know you to take over right now. All in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil the prince of our faith. And Lord, right now, touch me in our hearts of anybody. And I'm thinking it all done tonight. Through the authority of your name. The name is above all names. And right now, Lord, you're the same great as his. And they kept the great. And Lord, I'm thinking it all. And they just right now. And Lord, stir up your people. Stir up the anointing. Stir up the desire to heal. My Lord, my God, as you pass over the Lord to the sick and afflicted. Then we're proud out and turn off. Lord, stir up in the right days. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm thinking it all tonight. Through the authority of your righteous holy name. Out of a sin of my time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe in the anointing of the Lord. Amen. 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 Sorry, just miss us tonight. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the yes, word. We thank you for the vessel that was used, Lord Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you have done in this service tonight, Lord God. All the blessings and all the anointing that you poured out in this service, Lord, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord, for it. And as we get ready to go out, Lord God, I pray that you would just put your protection upon each and every one that's here, Lord, and lead them safely home, Lord Jesus. And I praise you for doing that, and I give you honor and all praise, Lord, in your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Good job, tonight. God bless you.